Welcome back guys. In this new video, we're going to look at some basic rules that we can follow in order to draw a Lewis dot structure. Now, just realize that I know it might seem complicated right now, like your professor is just throwing elements on the board, writing bonds and throwing on some dots. But if we follow these rules that I've built up and made from looking at various examples, you'll be able to be better prepared when it comes to drawing a Lewis dot structure. Now, here, if we take a look at the first rule, it says rule number one, least electronegative element goes in the center. And we're going to say, remember, electronegativity, when it comes to our periodic table, it increases going from left to right, and it increases going from the bottom up to the top of any group. And remember, with chemistry, there's one thing you can always depend on in chemistry. There's always an exception to something you come up with. Now, we say that the least electronegative element goes in the center, but that's not always the case. When it comes to hydrogen and fluorine, we're going to say they never go in the center. Never, ever go in the center. And they only make one bond. So that's a huge rule to remember. Sometimes hydrogen may be the least electronegative element, but we can never put it in the center. Hydrogen only wants to make one bond because every time you make a bond, you gain one electron. Hydrogen on our periodic table has an atomic number of one. If it gains one more electron, it's going to have an atomic number of two and become just like helium. It doesn't need to gain more than one more electron. So that's why it only makes one bond. Fluorine, fluorine doesn't want to make more than one bond. It only needs one electron to become just like neon. So that's why it only makes one bond. So just remember this big rule here. Next, we're going to say rule two. The number of valence electrons that an element has is equal to its group number. You're not going to see bonds between transition metals, so don't worry about that. Next, we're going to say carbon must make four bonds. If we take a look at the periodic table, and this one's kind of incomplete, but neon is right here. And just realize, how far is carbon away from being a noble gas? It's four spaces away. One, two, three, four. Every time we make a bond in a Lewis dot structure, we pick up an electron. So carbon would need to make four bonds in order to gain four more electrons to become just like neon. So that's why we say carbon must make four bonds. But there are rare occasions where it doesn't make four bonds. In those rare occasions, it's going to make three bonds. Now we're going to say if carbon atom were positive or negative, then it would make three bonds. Next, we're going to say nitrogen likes to make how many bonds? Nitrogen is three spaces away from being a noble gas. Therefore, nitrogen wants to make three bonds. Every bond it makes, it picks up an electron. So nitrogen likes to make three. Based on that trend, we can say that oxygen likes to make two bonds. It's two spaces away from being a noble gas, so it wants to make two um, bonds so that it picks up two electrons, so it has the same number of electrons just like neon. Then we're going to say halogens. They're group 7a elements. When they are not in the center, when they're not in the center of our Lewis dot structure, they only make one bond. And remember, fluorine can never go in the center, but the other halogens, bromine, chlorine, and iodine, we could put them in the center. Now, the last and final rule, this is called the expanded valence shell theory. We said earlier that nonmetals, when they form covalent compounds, want to follow the octet rule. The octet rule says that that central element wants eight electrons around it, eight valence electrons around it. But here's the thing, that is not always the case. We get into expanded valence shell theory territory. In this case, we're going to say that nonmetals starting from period three down to period seven can have more than eight valence electrons around them. They actually use their d shells, their d orbitals, to compensate the extra electrons they're picking up. So remember, hydrogen is here. So this is period one, two, three, four, five, six. There's also francium down here, which, which will be seven. We're saying period three nonmetals, so phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and lower, all the way down to seven. So selenium, bromine, iodine, and of course the noble gases as well. Okay. 
And we're going to say here, when it comes to the noble gases making bonds, we're usually only going to see krypton and lower making bonds. Because they're larger, they're able to form bonds with other elements. Neon, helium, and argon are higher up. They're too stable to want to form any type of bonds with anyone. So you usually don't see any bonds forming between helium, neon, and argon. But the bottom three, you can see bonds where they're forming connections to other elements. So again, remember these rules. They could save you on an exam. This is just a composite of different rules and patterns that I've noticed from reading various books. I just condensed it as far as I could to seven basic rules. Learn these basic rules. It'll help you a lot when it comes to drawing different types of Lewis dot structures.